Hey, you guys. So welcome back to Being Becoming the Podcast. I am your girl, MB. Uh, and then I also have our other co-host, Janelle, over here. Say hi to the people, Janelle. Hey, hey, hey. How y'all doing? So we are back. And if you are new, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. We're happy to have you. Like we are an empowerment podcast. Um, we talk a little bit about anything and everything from week to week. Um, but our main purpose here is to help people on their journey to become. So if you are old, um, or I don't want to say old, but if you have been watching us for a while, uh, then you know that we usually finish that sentence with become the best version of you or become the best you. Um, but we've kind of changed it a little bit. We really want you guys to have your own goal goals, visions, dreams, ambitions, all of that. So whatever ends after become, fill in that sentence. So become whatever you want. Um, but anyway, again, thank you guys for being here with us. Um, we are a podcast that drops every Thursday. We have a new episode coming out every Thursday. Um, so have a lot of stuff in store for you guys. Um, shout out to everyone who is listening to us. You can now find us on all streaming platforms. And shout out to those people who are viewing us over on YouTube. So we do have a channel on YouTube. It's I'm Just MB is our channel. And you can watch all of the episodes. Like I've said before, you are truly missing out. If you are not checking our facial expressions, just everything that we're doing. If you're not viewing us, you're missing out on part of the podcast and the experience. So go on over to the I'm Just MB channel. So Janelle, what are we talking about today? Girl, so currently, you know, it's a lot going on, right? Mm -hmm. But there are times in our lives where we have to let go and just move on. This is not just key in a romantic relationship, but let's be honest, this can be a toxic friendship or a work mm -hmm. environment. So we often put up with things that we shouldn't simply because we want to give them another chance or we've invested so much time and energy or... It could just be we've been in this position so many years and is afraid to jump into something new. So mm -hmm. it's important that we disconnect and cut ties with people, jobs, and other activities that no longer serve their purpose. Mm -hmm. So not only does it um, bring us negativity and heartache and stress, um, it's just overall good to cut these people off. So today's episode focuses on knowing when to move Yes, yes. That is such an important topic. Um, I do just want to talk to our listeners who follow us on our Instagram page. So our Instagram is at being becoming podcast. Um, like we said in previous episodes, we usually talk about like what the show topic is going to be on our Instagram, like a few days before, you know, we actually record these episodes. And we did have a guest that was supposed to be on this week. Um, but we had to reschedule. She will be on in a later episode this month. So don't worry. But that's really, I mean, me and Janelle had to think on the fly, like, what are we going to talk about this week? Uh, and I think we both, when we were talking about, we both were Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Um, so this really kind of prompted like our show topic this week, like knowing when to move on, because just looking at their interview, um, I think all of us could kind of relate to certain things. Obviously not relate to being royalty or anything like that. I can't relate to that journey or that dream or whatever. But definitely with her, you know, some of the things, you know, they both had to go to through and feeling trapped. Um, and then, you know, Harry and Megan ultimately making that decision like, hey, it's time to move on after they did everything possibly they could do, try to prolong or, you know, help the family or whatever, or the royals or whatever that looked like. So, yeah, I definitely thought it was a relatable story. And it's a topic that a lot of us go through, like, you know, what said, whether it's in work whether it's in an organization, I know a lot of these religious organizations, like there's things that will happen and you'll be like, you know, well, that doesn't, that doesn't go with my moral code or a moral compass. That's not what I joined romantic relationships, like Janelle said. So I thought it was super important to talk about it. Uh, Cause I feel like it's something that is kind of in all of our minds at this moment. Girl. Yes. Yeah. And my whole thing is, it's just, um, it took a lot of courage for both of them to walk away. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, like you said, they did everything um, humanly possible to even deal with that. And my thing is this, how would you feel if you had people photographing, you know, taking photos of you 24 seven, um, giving right. out false information? How would you feel? You know, mm -hmm. and she said that she faced a lot of anxiety and she even felt suicidal at one point. So before any of that occurs or it gets to that point, you really have to analyze the situation and say, hey, I need to put myself um, first 
And then that's when you go about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always a new opportunity out here. Um, so never feel like you're stuck in a position. You have to deal with that because you don't. You deserve way, way more. And I'm so happy she has a husband who put her first, put his family first. Yeah. And I was just like, you know mm -hmm. what? <laughs> but that is goals. <laughs> Hold on, that is goals. But I'm just being real, you know. It is. He put, put their family first, and I really like to see it. It definitely made me think about um, them a little bit differently. But let's get off the Royals. I mean, we all, they they have their own lives, all of that. Like we understand it. Um, I did want to share because we did talk about Instagram short uh, briefly. I did want to share. Um, some of the things that people had wrote, written back. So on my story recently, I had asked the question um, of, have you ever been in a relationship, work situation, um, any type of thing that was toxic and suffering? I will say out of everyone that responded, I would say we're about in the 90% that said yes. Um, and then my second question that I asked to go along with this topic was, what was the last straw before you knew it was time to move on? Um, so I did want to share some of the things that people kind of shared with me. So the first one we had was when I lost 30 pounds without trying, I didn't balance my work work life um, and was in denial about my depression and anxiety. So, you know, someone shared that with me and that's just, oh my gosh, like losing like 30 pounds without trying. Like I can't even imagine like the stress this person was specifically mm -hmm. under to have that type of like physical reaction Um to her environment, like whatever that toxic environment may have been. And, you know, you weren't, you weren't able to, you know, have the time to balance their work and life and then being in denial about depression, and anxiety, like those feelings can come on um, when it's time to, you know, when you're in a toxic situation. So, yeah, I thought that was interesting um, that they shared that with me. Um, yeah. Oh, you're good. And my thing is, I can totally relate to that. You know, I was in a position where I was working and um, I just dreaded going into work. Like, mm -hmm. I really, really hated um, what I was doing at that moment. And um, let me just say this. If you're ever feeling like, oh, I don't want to go in or you just have a I don't give a F attitude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're just exhausted mentally. I felt like I never had a break or a day to myself. Like I had two days off, but it was in the middle of the week. So mm -hmm. I worked every single weekend. I missed church. I missed family functions and events. Girl, it was just so, so exhausting. And I found myself kind of, you know, I don't want to say angry, but in a sense, I was just like, oh, this is just, ugh. This sucks. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And so finally, you know, reality just clicked in my head. I was like, girl, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, this doesn't make you happy. Go ahead and find what makes you happy. And in that season, God was really um, teaching me how to be patient mm. um, because at that job, I took at least 300 phone calls a day. So as you can imagine, you are on the phone with customers, they get upset with you and um, not all the time you're able to, you know, find a solution for their issues. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I say, it was a season where he was teaching me how to be patient um, in order to get me to teach, because that's one thing about teaching. You have to be patient with kids and that's with. All of them, K through 12, honey, because mm -hmm. each child is different. Each child learns different. Um, and you have to find a connection with each child and be very personal um, with them. So I feel like sometimes you have to go through a season in which it teaches you something to prepare for the next step. And again, uh, I didn't know. I've never been in teaching before, but hey. You just got to step out on faith and yes. mm -hmm. look, don't be scared. Don't be scared to leave that job. Don't be scared to go to a different church. If you need to go to a different church, mm -hmm. um, just never be afraid of rejection or failure. Um, you can only grow from any of those situations. Definitely. Definitely. When you were speaking and talking about, you know, don't be afraid to step out. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, leave the situation. It um, reminded me of our quote today. Um, so you guys, I do apologize. Uh, we always have a quote every episode. The last few episodes, I keep forgetting um, that we do, we have listeners too. So I haven't been reading it out. So I do apologize, you guys. Um, but this week, the quote is, it's always seems impossible 
until it is done. Um, so I thought that just speak, you know, volume in the sense of what we're talking about, um, because, you know, you'll be in those situations. And I think sometimes that's a lot of the reason why people are afraid to leave the situation is not because like, hey, um, they don't want to, you know, be better mentally, emotionally, physically, because a lot of these situations can be draining in that sense. It's just because they're scared of the unknown. Um, even when it comes, I'll specifically talk to a work situation. Like you're scared to, you may be scared to be like, Hey, is, you know, is there another job out there for me? Like I've been working in this position. I've been working for this company for so long. Um, you know, I built connections and relationships here. Like, is there something else out there for me? Um, even in relationships that can stand true too. So I definitely agree with it. Um, you know, I want people to, you know, be encouraged and have faith in a sense that like, even if you step out of a situation, like there's always something I want to say bigger and better out there for you guys. Um, so make sure that, you know, obviously you assess the situation, make sure it's right for you to leave in the first place. Uh, because this is another topic, but I do agree sometimes, especially when it comes to relationships, people leave a little too quick um, before they actually assess everything. But again, that is a whole nother topic. Um, <laughs> Girl, since you're on that topic of leaving. Okay, so anybody else watch Married at First Sight? Girl, uh, yeah, Kristen Page, right? Mm -hmm. OMG. I mean, you're talking about some people walk away too fast, but I feel like hell, some people stay in it too long. Yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Case the point. Um, simply because if you guys don't know, we're gonna do a little, you know, spill of information here. So Chris and Paige are now married, mm -hmm. but Chris found out that his ex fiance is six or seven weeks pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, mind you, Paige is his new wife, you guys. First off, he found Paige unattractive. He even said this. He had an anxiety attack because, quote, unquote, uh, she did not fit his um, standard of his ideal. Clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Let me just say, Chris, that was, whew, baby, mm, a lot. What you got to say, MB? Girl, just him and this whole season, and I really hope. Uh, that this, you know, you'd be watching those reality TV shows and you're like, okay, you know, the producers be putting this on, they'd be doing this for the cameras, they want to play this persona so they can go out and do, you know, other things. I hope that's what happened is happening with Chris because just some of the toxic behaviors and traits he has displayed on this show is just crazy. I was watching um, another podcast and they had Dr. Viviana on, which was one of the experts on Married at First Sight. They actually put the couples together and, you know, they were obviously asking her, like, why was Chris even, you know, recommended for the show? Like, he doesn't seem like he's authentic and who he is and who he represents. He doesn't seem like just some of their things weren't matching up, like with the pairing. Uh, and Dr. Viviana was saying she's like, obviously, she can't say much because the season's not over. Um, but that's not who Chris is showing on TV is not who he represented to, you know, the experts. Um, so there were certain things that, you know, they paired them on that, you know, he represented and said, Hey, I want this, that, you know, whatever. And it aligned with what Paige was looking for, but that's not who he's representing on TV. So I think it's super important to talk about, um, you know, situations where you feel like either you feel like someone else is not representing, or maybe a company is not representing what they initially represented, or if you feel like you have to change yourself in a situation. I think that's so important when you feel like you have to shape, bend, um, kind of, you know, concede to who you are as an individual, that's one of the signs where you're like, hey, maybe I need to move on from this situation because you should be able to be the, your authentic self in every space that you take up. Um, so I think that's super important to think about. And baby, this Crow Chris situation, ugh, just toxic energy, toxic masculinity. I don't like how he talks down to her. Like he's one of those people that, you know, people that, you know, you'll be friends with and they'll bring you up so you'll feel good about a situation. But then the next scene, like they're bringing you down or saying something mm -hmm. negative to you. So it's just too much back and forth. Like, I just want someone who's just, you know, even out. Like, obviously, you have arguments and fights and things like that. But I shouldn't have to be like every moment, like, ooh, what person am I getting now? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I that's all my thoughts on it and <laughs> wrapped up in a bow. Girl, and I'm just going to echo what you were saying, consistency and staying true to who you are. You know, it was uh, one guy I was actually talking to mm -hmm. and I had to like not talk to him anymore simply because 
when he's around other people, he was somebody else. And that's not going to fly with me. Like with me, I'm the same in every single uh, area of my life. When it comes to friends, when it comes to family and even work, everybody mm-hmm. is the same person, like legit. Right. I don't call anything. I'm a straight shooter. Um, and my thing is this, even in the professional realm, it's a way that you can say it. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You being real and still say it in a professional manner. So what you get is what you get with me in every single area. And my thing is with him, it was like he was just changing up simply to fit somebody else's image of him. And uh, me personally, you can't lead me. You can't be my man if you don't even know how to stand up in your own truth. Right. And um, again, I just don't, I don't like the flakiness of it all either. I don't mm-hmm. want you the same today, tomorrow, and forever, whatever. Uh, let me just say this. I don't mean like legit the same. I don't want you to be, you know, stagnant in like life or anything like that. I mean, that's mm-hmm. not what I'm saying. But I still want you to be the romantic guy that you was or you get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jolly and funny. But I still want you to be all of those things. And still have your character, your morals, and your beliefs intact at the end of the day. And Mm -hmm. for those things not to shift just because so-and-so is in the room. Right, right, right. And I think um, I wanted to quickly talk about a personal experience that I went through. Um, And I think I've talked about it on this podcast with, you know, changing careers um, and leaving my job in higher ed. But um, Janelle, you were continuing to talk about, you know, feeling like someone has to like change or things like that. I think that's one of the, out of the many reasons <laughs> why I left higher ed. That was one of the reasons why I left. Cause I found myself not being, when I first joined um, my first like professional, professional job. So I'm not talking about like undergrad, like obviously I worked as an RA and all of that in undergrad, but I'm talking about when I left undergrad and I started working for another institution um, higher ed institution. And, you know, I was working for professionally, you know, on the admin team. I found myself in the beginning, very happy with the position, felt like I was making an impact, you know, with the students, you know, getting along with coworkers, obviously there's tits and tasks that happen because, you know, drama in workplace be happening just as, you know, drama in real life. So, you know, that was all normal to me. But we started to have a lot of different shifts in the department. Um, It was really my like year going into like year two, closer to year three. um, There was a lot of people leaving. And when I say leaving, I mean like every week somebody was sending in a a termination letter or, you know, I'm resigning or something like that. Um, A lot of the people that they were hiring on, um, I didn't feel like represented, you know, our departments. Um, what am I thinking? Like overall, like outlook and thought, I didn't think they represented our department well. And I didn't think they supported. it. That was the big thing. I didn't think they supported our department. They were very big on like, let's get to the bottom line. And, you know, like, you know, make sure, you know, I'm, I don't want to say kissing butt, but kissing butt to, you know, provosts and everyone outside of our department. Um, so yeah, I, when all of that, those shifts happened, like I got to a point where I just didn't give a F anymore. Um, I, this is going to sound horrible and I'm kind of telling on myself. I am one of those people when I work for someone, and this is why I kind of am not, I'm choosing not to work for people anymore. I give my a hundred percent. Like I am all in. If you give me a task, an assignment, like I'm, I'm over here making sure I get it done. I'm making sure I go above and beyond. I had gotten to the point where I was no longer doing any of that. Like I was showing up to work at any time that I wanted to show up to work, was not checking in when I needed to check in, was really like I had my exit plan already in, um, you know, in route in case something happens. The funny thing is um, right before, because I I think, you know, we've talked about this. I actually left that position sooner than I was supposed to. So I left it. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to leave anyway because, you know, you guys now know I'm in Atlanta. I got married. We moved. I couldn't work that position from where I am now. But I ended up leaving the position like three months in advance than when I was supposed to originally leave after I got married just because I I could no longer take it. Like I was just suffocating in a sense in the position. And the funny thing is, is when I think about it, back on it, my mom even realized I was suffocating. She was like, she even like pulled me aside and she was like, Micaiah, uh, you know, if you end up getting fired from the position, because remember, I was not showing up when I was supposed, no one was checking me, but I wasn't showing up when I was supposed to. She was like, it's okay. I can tell that, you know, this isn't the job for you. Um, 
so yeah, to say all of that, like know, know when it's time to go. Because mm-hmm. even though, you know, the only reason I was staying and someone had actually shared their own journey um, with their own higher education institution, the only reason I stayed for as long as I did is because, you know, the students, I felt like I was making an impact with, you know, um, the student workers and the students that I supported. And then also my coworkers, like I look, my original co-workers because again a lot of them left I loved all of them I loved working with them loved engaging we had to work on a lot of like um, tasks together and collaborate so I loved all of that but when it got down to it I was like oh, I'm not happy here I don't want to be here I'm really just you know showing up just to show up I'm not even doing the work I'm supposed to be doing so yeah no one to move on don't drag yourself mm-hmm. along in those situations and again I can relate to that simply because um Again, I am teaching. I love I love teaching. And the, the crazy thing is, it's never really your co-workers mm-hmm. or the students. Yep. It's always the administration or um, the school board or, you know, any mm-hmm. of those factors right there that sometimes bring in all the issues for you guys as an institution overall. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that weight and that pressure, you feel like, you know what, I'm doing everything humanly possible to make sure that these kids are going to be successful, my peers are going to be successful. But it's one thing when you're not getting what you need from the top people. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything, leadership and structure comes from the top. Mm -hmm. And if it's not there, of course, your foundation starts to fall into crumble. And I think that's what was really going on with you and being in that situation um, is that everything was crumbling. Mm -hmm. And another thing is a lot of people take issues in, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, They take, uh, they give advice. Yeah. They give advice. Mm -hmm to them, but sometimes they disregard their advice uh, or, you know, just flat out ignore them. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about or, oh, you're not experienced enough in this field um, to have any say so here. But again, when you are in such an environment like that, it's time for you to make your little exit plan and just go on and you can really flourish in another environment. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I definitely agree. I think um, that situation specifically, and I only speak to that, you guys, because it was probably the most recent. I've had tons of situations like that, friendships, all of that, where I'm like, it is time to go exit this way. I'm not dealing with you no more. Um, But in that situation specifically, I felt like my time was up. I had grown enough. There was nothing else I could contribute to that organization. I had, you know, given every ounce of like, you know, energy I could give. I had given, I had spoken to, you know, people who were in leadership, voiced my concerns. Um, and it just, it wasn't being heard. So I felt like I had grown and grew enough in that organization I needed to move on. And it was just such a blessing in disguise um, because now I'm actually doing what I want to do. Um One thing that I've always um, wanted to do in anything that I'm a part of is to help others. So in undergrad, originally, um, you know, I had went in for psychology and my main purpose was, um, you know, I want to, you know, be a psychologist so I can, you know, help people, you know, with their, you know, emotional and um, any type of like support that they need and walk them through, you know, certain situations. So I had went Originally, my master's, I had went to uh, counseling psychology was what my master's degree was in originally. Then, you know, since I was working in higher education, I transitioned to higher ed. And I was like, okay, I can see how I can help people in this realm as well, helping students um, in their journeys, um, you know, helping my coworkers, the organization, like all of that. I, I felt like I was making an impact and helping in that realm. And now, um, you know, now I'm being able to help with this podcast. That's what me and Janelle are doing. We're helping you guys. We're providing resources. We're helping each other uh, with all these interviews that we're having and learning from each other. So, yeah, I definitely think when you feel like you've grown enough in one avenue, you know, it's not end all be all. Like go to another forum, go to another avenue. Um, I'm one of those people who strongly believes that you can do multiple things in life. You don't have to just some come to one thing and only do that for the rest of your life. If you have different passions and things like that. But I think your overall, um, you know, um, thing that you're meant to do or your purpose, purpose is specifically the word I was looking for, your overall purpose, I feel like you can pursue that in different avenues. So you just have to be aware of that, but it doesn't matter what form you're using to do it. 
Amen to that. And that's one thing um, with me. If it's no longer making me happy, um, Mm -hmm. girl, I'm the first one to go. And, you know, some people be like, oh, you need to, you know, stay around at that job or you need to continue. No. Mm -mm. If I am not happy, I do not need to be there. Because one thing about me, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have serious facial expressions and so <laughs> everyone is able to see how yeah. i'm feeling in that moment mm-hmm. so if i'm not like in my bubbly zone if i'm not happy you guys can clearly tell for one mm-hmm. and then for two i don't want to ever display that negativity in the world so instead of just sticking around to make so-and-so happy or to um you know get by no i'm gonna be the first one to go And you have to be okay with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And a part of your happiness is your purpose. People don't realize that your purpose, when you're um, at your level of purpose and you know what your purpose is, that brings you happiness and satisfaction. And I'm telling you guys, when you actually meet your purpose, the money will come. It might not come immediately, but it's going to come. So you just really have to be patient as well. Um, And again... Uh, I was waking, making way more money at this other job. But again, I was not happy. I was stressed out. I was exhausted. I was sleepy. I was tired. I was everything, mm-hmm. <laughs> legit everything. And when I switched to teaching, I was just like, oh my God, I love this. This is what I've been waiting for. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm really making an impact in these kids' lives. I'm really bringing in so much extra resources to them, um, knowledge and skills, not only to my students, but to parents and even my um, associates as well there. So Mm -hmm. man, find your purpose, stick to your purpose um, and do whatever, whatever will um, increase your purpose level. If that makes sense, enhance your abilities and your skills all of that, go for mm-hmm. it. If it's going to make uh, you a better person overall, I say do it. Um, some people get so uh, stuck in a certain spot. They mm-hmm. don't learn anything. They don't grow. You're supposed to be constantly evolving. You know, you're supposed to be seeking knowledge. And it doesn't just have to come from an institution like education. It can come from your friends. Right. Um, the other day, mm-hmm. <laughs> look, we was uh, talking to one of our mutual friends and he had shared something. And I was like, hell, I don't know how to share this back. Like, I'm not <laughs> savvy, y'all. I'm not tech savvy like that. But her, my friend MB, she was like, girl, do this, boom, boom, bam. And there you go. So mm-hmm. I'm constantly learning. It could be something so simple like that. But again, I'm constantly learning. And that's how it should be in any relationship. Even your friends. Let me just say this. If my friends can't teach me nothing, I don't need to keep you as a friend. That That is just it. Period. Girl, I had to snap on that one. Yes. Yes. You get what I'm saying? I'm learning so much from my friends in reference to stocks and money management and Mm -hmm. credit scores and how you purchase a house. I'm learning all this from my what? My friends. Mm -hmm. If you and your friends are not on that level or they're not learning anything and teaching you, don't keep them. Don't keep them. Yeah. Girl, it's so funny that you uh, bring up friends because I feel like, you know, talking through this episode, I feel like this is so similar to the episode we did on toxic friendships. Um, I think that was like episode three that we did. Um, So you guys definitely check that out as well. Like we said, we talked a lot about different things. This was just knowing when to leave overall, no matter what the circumstance or situation was. So we talked about friendships. We talked about jobs, you know, organizations, relationships, all of that. Um, But yeah, I definitely agree with everything that you said. Um, I definitely understand. And yeah, I think overall, just, you know, just if you have feel any of the signs that we talked about, like if you have those, you know, negative emotions toward, you know, the situation that you are in, if you get those gut feelings, um, if you feel like you're no longer growing, you're no longer being supported, like all of that, if you feel like you're being ignored, disrespected, just all of that, that's when it's time to assess the situation have a conversation uh, first, because I feel like a lot of times, um, specifically in relationships, uh, or not even just in relationships, just situations in, in general, will feel something about something. Um, and, you know, the first time it happens, okay, that's mar- that's strike one. Second time it happens, strike two. 
Third time it happens, strike three. Then we react. Instead, we should have reacted in strike one and had a conversation about it. Um, it made, you know, our point, you know, relevant and made our point, you know, known like, hey, I don't agree with this. I don't like how the situation went down, whatever the situation may be. Um, and then see how, you know, that person reacts or responds. And if, you know, behavior is changed, because sometimes if we deal with it early on, then it's not continuing to be an issue. So I definitely think a mm -hmm. conversation needs to be had. I don't want us to be giving you guys advice. And you're like, yeah, you know, I've, I've had this happen and this happen and I relate with you guys, but you've never had that conversation and then you decide to leave. Um, so make sure you have that conversation that you feel like if it's not interpreted in that conversation, then it may be time for you to move on. Mm -hmm. And again, make sure you address it the first time, because if you continue to let a situation or an issue slide, they think it's OK for one. Mm -hmm. But then for two, you get to the point where you're so fed up, you just finally explode. And nine times out of 10, when you explode, it's not in the best uh, form. That yeah. you should have reacted to. Mm -hmm. So make sure you address that situation when it first happens. Hey, I don't like what you did. I don't like what you said. And I feel like this needs to be addressed this way from this point on. Um, it's really, really simple in how you address people. And um, again, don't uh, quiet your voice. Speak up. You yeah. have to speak up. If you don't speak up, nobody knows what's in your head or how you feel. Mm -hmm. So speak up on all issues when it concerns you. Definitely, definitely. Well, you girl, I, I think we talked about anything and everything we could think about uh, when it came to this topic. Is there any last thoughts or final thoughts you have about um, when it's time to, or knowing when to move on? Um, again, do not be afraid of rejection. There's no fear when it comes to change. And um, again, you have to make the move that is best for you. Yeah. The worst thing anybody can say is no. And that no might not be even for you. You know, God allowed people to tell you no for a reason. So you can move mm -hmm. on to something better. And you guys have to be comfortable with that rejection. And the next person, that might be your biggest opportunity and your biggest blessing. So don't be afraid to just make that exit and make that change and just step out on faith. Girl, you done wrapped up the whole episode. I couldn't agree more um, with everything you said. I have no other thoughts. <laughs> um, so you guys, thanks for, you know, continuing to rock with us um, and checking out this episode. We definitely appreciate you guys. Um, if you want to, you know, continue to interact with us in this discussion, there's two ways you can do it. So we have the at being becoming podcast ig page like i said earlier on the episode like we post the episode topic for the week a few days in advance of us recording the topic so you're able to engage we'll ask questions you know you can respond back send us a dm all of that engage but also you can check us out in clubhouse we have a clubhouse room every thursday at 9 p.m where we talk about this week's topic um, so, you know, you can check us out over there and engage and talk. We invite everyone to the stage and we have just a general conversation. So it's not like, let me raise my hand. I have this to say, or I have this discussion. Like, no, we're just having an ongoing conversation as me and Janelle do in this forum as well. So, you know, definitely join us on Clubhouse. We'd love to get your thoughts and opinions about this topic. And then if you want to personally follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and I'm just MB. And you can see me at Beautiful J on Instagram as well. Okay, you guys. And we will see you guys next week. Bye, homies. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know where the homies came from, check out our last episode. <laughs> <laughs>